well. Hello, and in this video, we're going to cover a common conversation, which is Kubernetes versus Docker. But before we jump into that, I want you to hit the subscribe button so you get notified about new content as it gets made available. And if you hit the notification button, that notification will then pop up on your desktop as a video is published from Simply Learn. In addition, if you have any questions on the topic, please post them in the comments below. We read them and we do reply to them as often as we can. So with that said, let's jump into Kubernetes. Kubernetes versus Docker. So let's go through a couple of scenarios. Let's do one for Kubernetes and then one for Docker. And we can actually go through and understand what the problem specific companies have actually had and how they're able to use the two different tools to solve them. So our first one is with Bose. And Bose um, had a large catalog of products that kept growing and their infrastructure had to change. So the way that they looked at that was actually establishing two primary goals uh, to be able to allow their product groups to be able to easier, more easily catch up to the scale of their business. So after going through um, a number of solutions, they ended up coming up with a solution of having Kubernetes running their IoT platform as a service inside of Amazon's AWS cloud service. And what you'll see with both these products is they're very cloud friendly, but here we have um, uh, Bose and Kubernetes working together with AWS to be able to scale up and meet the demands of their product catalog. Catalog. And so the result is that we were able to increase the number of non-production deployments significantly by taking the number of services from being large bulky services down to small microservices, being able to handle as many as 1250 plus deployments every year. An incredible amount of time and value has been opened through the use of Kubernetes. Now let's have a look at Docker and see what a similar problem that people would have. So uh, the problem is with PayPal and PayPal um, processes something in the region of over 200 payments per second across all of their products. And PayPal doesn't just have PayPal, they have Braintree and Venmo. So the challenge um, that uh, PayPal was uh, really being given is that they had different architectures which resulted in different maintenance cycles and different deployment times and an overall complexity from having a decades old architecture with PayPal through to a modern architecture with Venmo. Through the use of Docker, PayPal was able to unify the application delivery and be able to centralize the management of all of the containers uh, with one existing group. The net net result is that PayPal was able to migrate over 700 applications into Docker Enterprise, which consists of over 200,000 containers. This ultimately opened up a 50% increase in availability for being able to in, um, add in additional time for building, testing, and deploying of applications. Just a huge win for PayPal. Now let's dig into Kubernetes and Docker. Uh, so Kubernetes is an open source uh, platform and it's designed for being able to maintain a large number of containers. And what you're going to find is that your argument for Kubernetes versus Docker isn't a real argument. It's Kubernetes and Docker working together. So Kubernetes is able to manage the infrastructure of a containerized environment, and Docker is the number one container management solution. And so with Docker, you're able to automate the deployment of your applications, being able to keep them in a very lightweight environment, and being able to uh, create a nice, consistent experience so that your developers are working in the same containers that are then also pushed out to production. So with Docker, you're able to manage multiple containers running on the same hardware much more efficiently than you are with a, a VM environment. And the productivity around Docker is extremely high. You're able to keep your applications very isolated. Uh, the configuration for Docker is really quick and easy. You can be up and running in minutes with Docker once you have it installed and running on your development machine or inside of your DevOps environment. So we look at the deployment between the two um, and the differences. Uh, Kubernetes is really designed for a combination of pods and services in its deployment. Whereas with Docker, it's around about deploying services in containers. Uh, so the, the difference um, here is that Kubernetes is going to manage the entire environment and then and that environment consisting of pods and inside of a pod, you're going to have all of your containers that you're working on and those containers are going 
control the services that actually power the applications that are being deployed. Kubernetes is by default an auto-scaling solution. It has it turned on and is always available, whereas uh, Docker does not. And, and that's not surprising because Docker is a tool for building out solutions, whereas Kubernetes is about managing your infrastructure. Kubernetes is going to uh, run health checks on the liveness and readiness of your entire environment. So not just one container, but tens of thousands of containers. Whereas Docker is going to limit the health check to the services that it's managing within its own containers. Now, I'm not going to kid you, uh, um, Kubernetes is quite hard to set up. It's, it's if of the tools that you're going to be using in your DevOps environment. It's, n it's not an easy setup for you to use. Um, and for this reason, you want to really take advantage of the services within Azure and other similar cloud environments where they actually will do the setup for you. Docker, in contrast, is really easy to set up. You can, as I mentioned earlier, you can be up and running in a few minutes. As you would expect, the fault tolerance within Kubernetes is very high. And this is by design because the architecture of Kubernetes is built on the same architecture that Google uses for managing its entire cloud infrastructure. In contrast, Docker has lower fault tolerance, but that's because it's just managing the, the services within its own containers. What you'll find is that most public cloud providers will provide support for both Kubernetes and Docker. Here we've highlighted Microsoft Azure because they were very quick uh, to jump on and support Kubernetes. Uh, but the reality is, is that today, Google, Amazon, and many other providers are having first level support for Kubernetes. It's just become extremely popular in a very, very short time frame. The companies using both Kubernetes and Docker is vast, and every single day, there are more and more companies using it and you should be able to look and see whether or not you can add your own company to this list thank you i hope you've learned something about the difference between kubernetes and docker it's not really kubernetes versus docker but it's how kubernetes and docker complement each other uh, if you have any questions please post them in the comments below uh, we do read them and we do respond to them if you like the content hit the subscribe button and then if you hit the notify hi button, there if you like this video subscribe to the simple learning YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.